Conservative New Media Viewers, what's going on? It's me, John D. Villarreal, the four-time national champion, joined by Paul F. Villarreal. And we are still talking about this amazing Miami Heat win and Dwayne Wade with the 41 points. I mean, wow, it's unbelievable. And my question is, you know, we don't want to overlook anything. First of all, our personal opinion only, not alleged any facts, not cast his personal own for entertainment purpose only. Please check disclaimers. I had a reaction video right after the game. If you haven't seen that, check that out. And Paul, the NBA expert, had his breakdown of report and analysis video. If you haven't seen that, check that out. In this video, we want to spin it forward and talk about what's going to happen the next round and really just also put the question out there, Paul. We don't want to overlook anything here with the Eastern Conference Finals coming up with the Miami Heat either going to face the Boston Celtics, which I probably think they're going to face, or the Philadelphia 76ers. And look, Game 7 in Boston, you know, one game. Anything can happen. It's a one-game series now. But really... Is this now with this statement and the strength that the Heat have been, you know, rolling on here and with the possibility of getting Chris Bosch back, is it really now a straight up fast express ticket, if you will, for the Miami Heat to the NBA Finals? Tell me about, you know, let's dig a little deeper. What does this big, huge win tonight mean? And, you know, it's three wins in a row for the Miami Heat. And how good is this team looking? And do you expect, as I expect, that they are going to end up in the NBA Finals? Let's talk about what's going on right here. Well, I think except for the possible issue with Chris Bosh and whether he can play in the Eastern Conference Finals, besides that, I think that Miami basically has an easy pass uh, to the NBA Finals. Yeah. Look, I, I feel like, you know, Boston, they're, you know, a very good team and, and, and a great team, no question about it. But I feel like, you know, they're getting a little banged up. They're a little bit of an older team. And I just don't feel like at the end of the day they have as much firepower on that team as Miami does. And I don't feel like they're hitting on all cylinders right now the way Miami is. I mean, look at the kind of uh, stretch in this series that Philadelphia has given them. And Philadelphia, young, talented team, but I don't feel like they have enough experience and enough size to really match up with Miami, Paul. Yeah, Philly, in, in my opinion, just doesn't match up with Miami well. Uh, Miami's pretty much just kind of uh, really been in control of the recent meetings between those two teams, including last year in the playoffs. Uh, Boston is a different story. Boston actually won the season series against Miami this year, three games to one. What happened is Boston won. They understand the head coach, uh, Doc Rivers, knows Miami's system really well, and they made some changes after the All-Star break, the Celtics did, And that really caught Miami off guard, but there's two problems for them. The first problem is that they are without starting shooting guard Avery Bradley, who Mm -hmm. is out with, I I think, a a subluxation of the shoulder, kind of a dislocation. He's out for the rest of the playoffs, it appears. That is a huge loss to them because he's such a good defender. Um, Also, they've had other injuries. Uh, We know Paul Pierce sprained his knee. He's playing with a sprained knee, so he's not at 100%. I've heard that Rondo's got some lingering injuries, and Ray Allen has bone spurs that he's playing with, so you really have a problem uh, right off the the top of the bat about who's going to guard Dwayne Wade. I mean, the only person I can think of off the top of my head would be uh, Michael Petrus, Mikhail Petrus, which is good, but you know, Avery Bradley is one of the probably the top five or ten perimeter defenders in the league, and it's just not the same thing. Um, uh, I think that if Boston matches up with Miami, which I agree with you, if that's the likely scenario, given that Game Seven between the Sixers and the Celtics is in Boston, I think you're gonna have a real problem. It, even if Chris Bosh is out now, if Chris Bosh comes back, it's gonna be more of a problem. But now Miami's kind of figuring out how to play without Bosch, and obviously it's working. Yeah, and the thing of it is with Boston, I mean, Boston's got a lot of talent. They've got a lot of experience. Rondo can distribute the ball. It can do a lot of different things. And obviously, you know, KG and, 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 and Pierce and everybody else. But I feel like, you know, with Miami shooting that strong outside shot right now, that just creates so much problems for any team. You know, and, and that is going to really, you know, have a, a lot of pressure on the Boston defense. And I also think that, you know, when they're able to play fast and rack up the kind of points, you know, the over century mark like they were able to do tonight, that, you know, I don't think that Boston can handle that level of speed from them either. 
Yeah, if if Miami is hitting their outside shots the way they did tonight, they're almost unbeatable. Their defense is exceptional, and obviously you have two just amazing players in LeBron James and Dwayne Wade, not slighting Chris Bosh, who also can be very big, as he was in last year's Eastern Conference Finals against the Bulls. It's just, if they're hitting the shot, it's just too much. I think if they're on their game and they're reasonably healthy, Bosh is back, I think the only team that's left in the playoffs that might be able to give them a, a, a problem is the San Antonio Spurs. And, and the Spurs are very, very tough. And as we talked about before, we expect the Spurs to be in the, the, the finals as well, being able to beat OKC. But obviously that's going to be a fabulous series, and, and OKC is on a streak right now. So, look, I think the Western Conference Finals and the Eastern Conference Finals are going to be fantastic. We've had some fantastic NBA playoff action here. And the news tonight is the Miami Heat is going on to the Eastern Conference Finals. They're looking incredible to all the haters. They have You have nothing to say now because Dwayne Wade stepped up with a huge 41 point. It's unbelievable. And the MVP, LeBron James, has been showing night after night why he is the MVP. When things were really tough there, Paul, you know, in, in I, that, that crucial, crucial game there, I think it was game four, if I'm correct, yeah. you know, LeBron James said, I'm the MVP and I'm the superstar and I'm taking this team on my back. And he was able to really do it when, you know, Dwayne, you know, wasn't fully in the mix. And so I think, you know, that this team has come through. And, again, if they get Chris Bosh back, forget it. All bets are off in my personal opinion. Go ahead. That's exactly right. The most important game, in my opinion, I was thinking about this earlier today or earlier tonight uh, as this game was winding down. The most important game in the two-year experiment of Miami Heat was game four against the Pacers. Because Wade was coming off that awful performance, five points. And let's, you know, if they went down three games to one, NBA history says that the, the team that's up three to one wins like, I don't know, 85% of the time or whatever like that, something like that. That game was for everything. That game was for the future of the big three. That game was, you know, are Wade and James going to be losers and they're going to break it up? That game was for all the chips. All of now that they won that game, now I think they got their confidence going. And it's like you saw after that game, uh, LeBron and Wade hugging each other and stuff because they knew how important that game was, and they won it. So it's like they already got pushed to the brink, and they came through it. And I think now it's that's the springboard that's, that's gotten them going now. That is such a gut check right there. And to me, that is such a, a signature game by which LeBron sent a message to the entire league of the toughness, the mental toughness, the strength that he has, and how he's not going to be punked out, in my personal opinion, by anybody, and that he is the MVP and he earned it. All right, And you compare the way that LeBron responded in that game to the way Kobe and the LA Lakers failed to respond to OKC. And I think that says everything that you need to know right now about the state of the NBA and LeBron James versus Kobe, Paul. I totally agree. It, in my opinion, it seems like there's uh, a number of people in the media, at least in the internet media, that are fans of Kobe. And it's almost like those people weren't even interested in covering game uh, five after the Oklahoma City Thunder beat, beat Kobe. And Kobe himself didn't agree to do a media uh open to the media exit interview for the Lakers, which is very rare, at least as far as I can tell. Most of the players do an exit interview, and then they go and talk to the media, and Kobe didn't do that. My own feeling on that is that Kobe might want to protect his image, and he just kind of wants to get to the Olympics in 2012 this year and just kind of forget about him going out in the second round for the second straight year. But, as you said, perhaps some of those people that – root for Kobe in the media. Now they're, they were all over this series, as far as I can tell. And I'm talking about Miami versus Indiana. Right. Because they were hoping Indiana was going to punk out LeBron. Well, it didn't happen that opinion. way. So now it's like, you know, they're starting to grasp at air because the, the word on the street or the thinking is that 
if Miami beat the Pacers, they're going back to the finals. And you now here we are. So what do you fans out there think? Do you agree with us that this was a huge big win for the Heat and that the Heat are on a roll. Who do you think is going to end up in the finals? What do you think is going to happen between Boston and Philly? What do you think is going to happen in the Eastern Conference Finals? And what do you think is going to happen in the Western Conference Finals? Big win for the Heat. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade are doing great. Where do you think they're going to end up? I think they are on a fast track for the NBA Finals. Paul, the NBA expert, agrees with me. What do you have to say about this? Give us a comments below. Please subscribe up. I'm John D. Villarreal, the four-time national champion. That is Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We are conservative media. Please rate this video up. Also, please post to your social networking sites. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.